we go again, another Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com and today I want to talk about my retouching process sort of start to finish. Not necessarily technically how I do each little thing, but simply the order in which I attack an image. Uh, I got a great question in the YouTube comment section from a commenter who basically asked me that, like what is your step-by-step -step process? What do you do first, what do you do second, third, fourth, fifth, all the way until you export the image and I thought, you know what, that would be a, an amazing tutorial, such a cool sort of cross-section of what I do without having to worry about getting super technical. So what we're going to do is we're going to retouch this image and I'm going to hyperspeed through all of the sort of, you know, technically bits and you're going to see how we take this image from right out of the camera to the finished product. So let's jump in. Well, actually, before we jump in and really start doing anything, I'm selling a course over on tutvid.com apropos that it is all about how to retouch images. It's really, really cool. You can go pick it up and uh, you support the site if you pick it up. There's a link right there. A video card appeared on the video. Uh, you can click it and check it out. But let's talk about the process. So this was an image we just set up. It's a single light shoot, Philadelphia, very early morning. And um, it's a camera raw image. So I'm going to open it back up in the camera raw editor. And the camera raw editor is the first place where my images go. In fact, I'm going to set this to camera raw default. So boom, right out of the camera, we have this shot. What I'm usually looking at in the camera raw editor is how can I reduce contrast and reduce color a little bit and worry about the color temperature. Do I want it to be cooler or warmer? Uh, and it all depends shoot to shoot, location to location, mood to mood. Uh, all of that stuff uh, depends. But the very first thing I'm looking to do almost always is reduce contrast so I can bring back contrast selectively where I want in Photoshop later on. Also, and almost equally as key is uh, equally as important, I guess I should say, is that we want to work with a 16-bit image. It just gives us a very broad range of color and tone to work with. We don't have to worry about our image degrading as we push and pull it this way or that in Photoshop, in Camera Raw, you name it. Uh, I also, just personal preference, like to work with smart objects, so I usually choose to open this in Photoshop as a smart object. Hit OK. I actually have a preset over here. Uh, just saving my settings. You can. See, I'm just making tonal adjustments, boost the con uh, exposure a little bit, uh, change the contrast a little bit. Maybe it's, it's a little too green, a little too warm, so I'll boost the magenta a little bit and maybe reduce the warmth just a touch. Right down to like 6,000 Kelvins. Uh, one of the other things that I'll do here that I'm noticing is the dark vignetting up here in the corner. So I'll grab my graduated density uh, tool here and just set the exposure, you know, up to you know one and a third stops, whatever. And I'm just going to drag a nice little, uh, nice little thingy over the corner there. Just lighten it up a little bit. Doesn't make it perfect, but I think it's good enough for what we're doing. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. It's going to conform all those changes and set those changes here into my document. So that's step number one going through the camera raw editor. Step number two is all of the pixel pushing. Things like liquify, any kind of transforming that I would do, um, and any sort of lens correction. So if we're going to do lens correction, I can just go filter, uh, lens correction, and I can tweak the lens uh, any, any way I want. I like to do this kind of stuff first. I don't really think there's any lens correction I need to do here, so I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, but I can also go ahead and go filter, liquify, and like her dress, there's a bump in her dress right here. For the most part, I don't like to Go crazy with liquify, but I will use it when I have to to clean up some things uh, in the image. So maybe I'll just push the dress in there just to flatten out that little bump in her dress, being careful not to disturb the foliage too much. If the hair is a little crazy too, you can push the hair in or pull the hair out a little bit, give it a little volume, right? So this is all pixel pushing stuff, all right? So we're going to pull her hair out, give her additional volume, maybe push in down here to really accentuate the volume up here. Uh, we don't want to stretch it too much, make it go too crazy. That would be bad. Uh, then we'll go ahead and hit OK. So liquify, that kind of thing comes first. Oh, that's the liquify glitch. We need to undo that. Uh, that We can't really use liquify in a 16-bit image. Photoshop, please fix that. That would be wonderful. Um, you can uh, you can actually use liquify, but what you have to do is save it as a mesh and then load that mesh into liquify. It's a pain in the neck. So we're going to pass over that. But just know that when I'm using liquify, uh, that's when I do it. Oh, by the way, if you don't want to do all that mesh nonsense, you can just convert your image to 8-bit image. But Again, we're working with a 16-bit image very specifically here. All right, so number two, or number three, I should say, the number three step is blemish removal. So this is like pseudo-pixel pushing because we're really being non-destructive about it. I like to create a new layer, and I'll name it blems, and this is where I do my initial blemish removal.
Now, once I've finished the initial blemish removal, and sometimes I use a blemish layer like this, a lot of times I'm using frequency separation, um, and I've got some tutorials on frequency separation you can check out. I'll try to remember to link them in right here. Um, but whatever whatever way you go about doing it, this is a pretty non-destructive way. Everything's up on a new layer, and we go through, and I just went kind of crazy and got rid of every little thing that I could. But after blemish removal comes facial details, eyes, nose, lips, and even the eyebrows. So let's go ahead and retouch that stuff real quick. Now, after the eyes and the facial features have been retouched, if I'm doing any kind of hair retouching, at this point, the hair retouching would happen. Now, for this photo, we're not really going to do much when it comes to the dodging and burning, which is actually going to be next. We will do some dodging and burning to accentuate stuff on the hair. Um, but just know that in between eyes and general dodge, uh, like eyes and facial details, retouching that stuff, and uh, going ahead and beginning the dodging and burning and sort of the toning process, I would also go in and correct anything or do full-scale retouching on the hair as well. And the next thing that I like to do is, as I just mentioned, the dodging and burning. So I'm just going to here add my dodge and burn layers. I have an action just because it's just two curves adjustment layers, one set to screen, one set to multiply. Multiply is the shadows, screen is the highlights, and a mask attached that's filled with black. I like to work with the shadows first, so I like to go in and dodge, or I'm sorry, not dodge, but burn in shadows. I use the brush tool. I like to set the opacity of the brush tool to 10%, and I like to use a large, soft edged brush to do this. And I'm using a tablet right now, but for this, I don't like to have shape dynamics turned on. I like to have just a straight brush without pressure sensitivity. So I'm just going to begin going in and dusting up the shadowy details that need to be uh, sort of darkened up and accentuated a little bit. Now, once I finish with the dodging and burning, I like to begin all of the contrast and tone adjustments. And again, I, I in Camera Raw, remember we reduced a lot of contrast, and I'm not quite ready to add contrast back in, but I'll begin playing with the idea of adding some contrast. So I'll go and I'll add uh, an adjustment layer, maybe curves first, and I'll boost the blacks a little bit, and then I'll increase... Uh, I'll just begin by increasing the shadows, the depth of the shadows, so darkening shadows a little bit, and boosting the highlights just a little bit. That's going to add some contrast. You can see before and after. That's pretty cool. And we can also go ahead and tweak the colors a little bit, reduce the reds and the shadows, maybe normalize reds and the highlights. Uh, green. If anything, I want to add just a little bit of green, but take green away from the highlights. I don't want too much green up in the highlights. That'll tend to overpower the image a little bit. Um, and then maybe just a very little bit of blue in the shadows and a little tiny bit of yellow up in the highlights, just a very little bit. I don't want to get too retro looking. Um, and then what I'll do here is probably go, let's reduce contrast quite a bit with the levels adjustment layer. So I'll increase my black output and the white output, something like that. And then I would go with either a black and white adjustment layer or like channel mix or set to monochrome. And I'll boost reds to really make that portion of the image bright and set it to like multiply and then reduce the overall opacity, something like that. And then what I would do is use the hotkey to merge all layers to a new layer. That's command shift option E, control shift alt E on the PC. I would convert this to a black and white, command shift or control shift U. And then I would set this to layer blend mode of soft light. That's going to introduce more contrast. You know what? I'm going to undo a couple times. I want to leave that as a color image for this case. Go soft light and then reduce the opacity. And we're just bringing some contrast back in. You can see there is what we began with. We're starting to just get this moodier color effect. So that's probably enough for the tones. Um, after this, we begin color grading. And again, here, I'm going to drop contrast once more. And I'm going to reinfuse contrast by way of a gradient map. Now, I haven't really played around with any uh, set uh, gradient uh, gradient maps that are go we're going to use to uh, introduce some color. So I'm just going to go with like a, I don't know, just one that I have here. Soft light. Uh, as a blend mode, and that's actually a little bit borderline oppressive. Let's go with a different gradient map here. Uh, something... We'll go with something like this. But maybe what I'll do is make my shadows a little bit more magenta-ish, and the highlights, I'll give them a little bit more saturation and a, a little tiny bit more brightness. All right, shadows maybe shouldn't be quite so dark. All right, something maybe a little bit more like that. Okay. 
It's going to give us a nice, just creamy uh, color grade over the top. We can always reduce the opacity if we want. Now, if we reduce the opacity of the gradient map, again, we want to balance it with the, the lack of contrast, so we'll reduce uh, our brightness contrast layer as well. So there's some color grading. I'm actually not a huge fan of it, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, last, oh, well, not last but not least, the next step is going to be sharpening. And for sharpening, I like to do a couple things. First and foremost, merge everything to a new layer using that same hotkey, Control Shift Alt E, Command Shift Option E on the Mac. Uh, make it black and white, Command Shift or Control Shift U, and then go Filter Other High Pass. Now, bear in mind that I've already applied an initial pass of um, of sharpening to this image in the camera raw editor when we initially brought the image in. So like radius of 1.5 is great. We're just starting to see details in her face. Okay. If I zoom in and I will zoom in so we can see what's going on. We can see all of these edges have been sort of brightened up and I can just set this to, let's try overlay. Overlay's, overlay's got some good bite to it. I like that. One of the other ways, by the way, that I typically would sharpen is with frequency uh, separation. I can sharpen the details layer, but again, I haven't used frequency separation in this particular retouching stack. Uh, but that, for here, just a global high pass layer is a nice just uh, over the top sharpening. One of the other things that I'll do is I'll create a new blank layer, um, and this is just sort of like a catch all layer. Um, so what this would be for is like if I'm looking around the image and realize you know what that little bit of green is super distracting so I'll just grab like the clone stamp tool and make sure I'm set to current and below and I'll just paint that right away so little things like that if I if I notice some little detail on her face that I forgot way back in one of the earlier retouching steps um, I'll just knock it out right here Maybe if I want to get rid of some of those little marks on the, the side of her dress uh, or what have you I can do all of that on sort of this catch all layer that I think is pretty important. I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna name this layer high pass here before I forget what's going on. High pass. All right, and then last but not least, I like to add grain. Um, and again, this is something where some photographers just no, no way, uh, no grain. But a lot of great retouchers like to add grain at the end of their retouching projects because a little bit of grain helps blend all of the colors and all of the retouching and all of the skin adjustments together and give you just a nice overall finished look. So I have an add noise um, action here in Photoshop and it adds a lot of noise initially but what I can do is I can scale everything back and that's usually what I tend to do, scale back the noise just so I get a little bit of noise. It gives me just a nice fine blend at the end of all of the retouching. So that is it. Well, nine or ten steps, my general process, and let me give you here a before and after. I'm holding down my alter option key. There's the image we had. There's the image we have now. So we went through, we adjusted color and tone, we did the skin uh, retouching, we did some dodging and burning, we did some color grading, we did some sharpening, we added some noise, we did all the stuff that I normally do. That is the process of what I do. So to recap, I begin in camera raw, I'm looking to reduce contrast, bring it into Photoshop, I do my pixel pushing liquify, transforming, lens correcting, so on and so forth. Then I go ahead and do my blemish removal, mainly by way of high frequency uh, separation. Uh, you can do it however you want. I showed you a kind of an alternative method here in this little roundup. Uh, then I like to go ahead and focus on the details on the face, the eyes, nose, lips, eyebrows, clean that stuff up. I would then do hair retouching if the image needs hair retouching. After that, I go ahead and do the dodging and burning and begin the process of editing the tones and contrast in the image. Then I like to target exactly that, tones and contrast, and I go ahead and shift things around, slide things around a lot of times with curves and, and levels and, and uh, sometimes an occasional multiply or soft light black and white layer thrown in there. Then I'll go ahead and color grade and change the overall color and mood of the image. Then I will go ahead and sharpen. Then I have my catch-all layer where I clean up and hit anything that I missed. And then I throw a noise layer on top of everything. And oh, I should throw in there, occasionally I'll go ahead and sort of relight the image. And the way I do this is with quick mask mode, grab a really big brush. And this, again, is one of the last things that I would do uh, to a, a photo. Make my brush quite large. And I'll paint down here with black, down here around the bottom of the image, right? Then hit the letter Q. It's going to load that as a selection. I'll go select, modify, feather, and feather this like 400 pixels, an obscene amount. And then throw a levels adjustment layer down here and just darken up the bottom of the image just a little bit. All right, just a tiny, tiny little bit. And then I'll do the same thing, load that up. Uh, or go to quick mask mode, excuse me, and I'll paint down over the top of the image. Notice I painted a little bit extra over her. Go ahead, hit Q, 
uh, which will load it as a selection. Modify or select modify feather again ridiculous 400 pixels of feathering at another levels adjustment here and I'll typically go ahead and boost the brightness up here of uh, of our highlights or not the, of, the, of the top part of the image what am I saying there we go something like that just give it a little kick and you can see here if we shut off those layers and turn them back on. It definitely makes a difference in what it does for the image. Uh, sometimes you may want to just reduce the opacity, play around with them, see what looks good. But if I'm going to do a little digital relighting overall, again, that's a very global thing. And by global, I mean something that's affecting the entire image overall, like as a big umbrella draped over the image, just a little lighting adjustment. So that's it. So for the process of retouching and how I like to attack the images that come into Photoshop that I'm working on, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Hey, wait, before you go anywhere else, I'm bringing the intensity. I'm bringing the alacrity. I've been slaving over a hot microphone for the last two hours making this video. You gotta at least hit the like button, right? And after that, if you haven't, make sure you hit the subscribe button. That way you'll never miss another one of these fun-filled videos. Also, go over to tutvid.com where you can sign up for my newsletter. And just for signing up, I'm gonna give you 30 free time-saving tips in Photoshop. You're going to get it. It's a video. It's a PDF. It's everything you want it to be. And I'm also on every social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I got links down in the description of this video. You can follow me. I love you guys. And thank you for watching this video.